This week we're going to continue discussing electromagnetic energy. And the first thing that we want to talk about today is intensity. Your book uses the term intensity but doesn't really define it for you. And so I want to talk about what intensity is and then we'll see how it, uh, why it's an important thing to understand for radiologic technologists. Okay. So what is intensity? The intensity of, an electromag of electromagnetic radiation is a measure of the energy per time per area. And let me just draw a little picture to try to illustrate this for you. Imagine that you've got a light bulb. So here's our standard incandescent light bulb. And that light bulb is putting out energy uniformly in all directions. And imagine a little square some distance away from that light bulb and uh, we'll make it be a square centimeter so a centimeter on each side then you could measure how much energy per second is absorbed by that one square centimeter that's what we mean by intensity so it's the amount of energy per second that's getting to a specific to a, a small area okay or getting to an area now you can uh, certainly have a sense of this um, already because intensity is basically what we think of as the brightness of a bulb. So if you're very close to a bulb it will appear very bright. In other words the intensity is high near the bulb. But as you go away from the bulb the light becomes less bright. In other words the intensity goes down. And so intensity goes down with distance. And that's important for us both uh, just looking at a light bulb, but more importantly, it also is true of x-rays, that um, the distance from an x-ray tube as that increases, the intensity of the x-rays goes down, and we want to understand exactly how that works. If we're dealing with visible light, the unit of, it, of intensity that we use is the lumen, and so if you're close to a light bulb, the intensity is going to be a higher number of lumens than if you're farther away from it. For x-rays, um, the uh, unit that we use for x-ray exposure is the Röntgen. And so if you're close to an x-ray tube, the intensity in Röntgens is going to be higher than if you're farther away from it. Let's look at how the intensity varies as we move away from a source. We can understand this conceptually by looking at this picture. That if you think about the light being put out by this source, if you're a certain distance, like one meter away from it, that energy per second that's being put out is being spread out over a sphere of that size. Okay, and the diagram is really just showing you half of the sphere. Now, if you're a distance of two meters away, now that light is being spread out, that same amount of energy is being spread out over a much bigger sphere. And what you'll notice is, if we just follow kind of one piece of the sphere here, that if the light is being spread out over this one little square at one meter, that same amount of light is now being spread out over four squares at two meters, or over nine squares at three meters. And so basically what that shows you is that as the distance increases, the intensity goes down because the light is being spread out over more and more area. And specifically, it doesn't just go down, but it goes down as the square of the distance because you'll notice going from here to here, the amount of area, even though the distance doubled, the amount of area is quadrupled. It's the distance doubled squared. Or if I go from here down to here, I now the distance is now three times as much, but the area that that light is spreading out over is three squared or nine times as much. So the intensity decreases with the distance squared. And that's what we mean by an inverse square law, that as the distance increases, the intensity goes down by the square of the distance. Well, let's see what this looks like in terms of a formula. Um, here's the formula for the inverse square law. And basically what the inverse square law does is it compares the intensity at one position. So again, let me draw my light bulb here. 
let's say that I'm a distance d1 away from the light bulb, then, and I measure the intensity at that distance, and it's i1. What the inverse square law tells me is that if I'm now at a different distance, d2 away, that the intensity there would be i2, and the intensities and distances are related in this way. By the way, you'll notice the book writes this in two different ways. It's okay to first divide the distances and then square it, or square the distances, each distance first, and then divide it. So you can do it either way. Generally, I'm going to use this method, um, but you can, you can do it either way. So what this shows you is simply that as you increase the distance, the intensity goes down by the square of that increase. So let's see how this relates to problems. Um, the first problem I'm going to do is going to involve visible light, and then after that we'll concentrate on x-rays. So here's my inverse square law. I1 over I2 is equal to D2 squared over D1 squared. And my problem says the intensity of the light from a light bulb is 50 millilumens at a distance of one meter. What is the intensity at a distance of four meters from the bulb? Okay, so let's see what we know. We know that I1 is 50 millilumens at, and that's at a distance of one meter from the bulb. We also know that the other distance we're interested in is, is four meters. And what we'd like to know is what is the intensity at a distance of four meters from the bulb. So what I want to do is I want to take my inverse square law and I want to solve that for I2. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cross multiply. In other words, I1 uh, times D1 squared is equal to I2 times D2 squared. So you'll notice I've just brought the D1 squared up here and I brought the I2 up here. Okay, now I'm just going to divide both sides by D2 squared and rewrite it for I2. So I2 is equal to I1 times D1 squared divided by D2 squared. And now I can go ahead and solve for the intensity at distance number 2. So I'm going to plug in 50 millilumens. And one thing you might be wondering is, do I have to convert from millilumens to lumens? The answer is I don't, because notice that since I have distance squared over distance squared, the distances will cancel out. Whatever units I1 is in, that will be the units in my answer for I2. So I have 50 millilumens times 1 meter squared divided by 4 meters squared. And when you work that out mathematically, what you should get is 3.125 millilumens. Okay? And so what we can see is that our distance uh, increased, and therefore the intensity decreased. And it decreased by quite a bit, because again, it decreases as the square of the distance. So the intensity goes down much faster than the distance increases. Let's look at an example uh, using x-rays. The exposure from an x-ray tube is 500 milliruntgens at 70 centimeters. What will the exposure be at 150 centimeters? So you'll notice sa really the same problem as before. Um, I1 is going to be 500 milliruntgens, and the distance is 70 centimeters. I2 is what we're looking for, and that's at a distance from the x-ray tube of 150 centimeters. Based on uh, what we had on the last slide, I'll just use that same result, that I2 is equal to I1 times D1 squared over D2 squared, and therefore I have 500 milliruntgens times D1, which is 70 centimeters squared, divided by D2, which is 150 centimeters, and I need to square that. 
And when you work that out on your calculator, what you should get is 108.9 milliruntgens. So that would be the x-ray exposure at a distance of 150 centimeters from that x-ray tube. Let's do another example. This one is a little bit different um, because in this one we're looking for a distance instead of an intensity. So again here is our inverse square law. I1 over I2 is equal to D2 squared over D1 squared. And let's identify what we've been given. The problem says the exposure of an x-ray tube is 40 milliruntgen at 200 centimeters. How far away from the source will the exposure be 2 milliruntgens? Well, let's see. We know that I1 is equal to 40 milliruntgens, and that's at a distance of 200 centimeters. And we know that I2 is 2 milliruntgens, and that is at a distance that we don't know. So that's what we're trying to find out. So I've got to solve this for d2. So let me just write it for d2 squared. In other words, I'm going to bring the d1 squared up to the numerator on the other side. So d2 squared is equal to i1 d1 squared over i2. And now I'm going to go ahead and plug in the values. I1 is 40. D1 is 200. So I have 200 centimeters squared. And I'm going to divide that by I2, which is 2 milliruntgens. When you calculate that, you're going to get 800,000. Now, that's the distance squared. And what we want is the distance. So I've got to take the square root of that, 800,000. And when I do that, I'm going to get 894. And the units would be centimeters, because that's the units of D1. And that would be the distance where the exposure would be 2 milliruntgens.